That is right, ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here. Destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that OTK like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1400 ladder. Yeah, we're back with another Tempai Dragon deck profile. And that's because of the fact that, uh, well, we've perfected it a bit. Um, and so I wanted to show off um, the build that I feel is going to be what I play going into the new format. And. Uh, it's not perfect, right? I mean, you're playing a going second deck. If you go first, you're ending on Heavenly Spheres Pass. Um, we talked about all the going first and choke points and all that in our in-depth video. And I'll go over that a little bit in this deck profile. Um, but if you haven't seen the in-depth video on like how to play it, combos, choke points, etc., be sure to go and check that out um, because you will get a whole in-depth guide on how this deck functions and how it works. So um, I'm just going to shut up and dive on into this since we are a couple weeks away from Legacy Destruction. I figured, you know what? Bigger name YouTubers are talking about this deck. I may as well put out the goo out there now and then people can start messing around with it and I can talk about all the theories that I have in my head because, I mean, there are people already talking about cards as side deck against this deck, whether it's Battle Fate or Threatening Roar. I've even seen some people talk about Dragon Capture Jar, which don't do that. It's garbage um, because I can just summon out two dragons they get switched to defense mode and then i make a black rose and i nuke your board and then you're salty so if you want to beat this deck literally just play a fucking summon limit like the, the deck auto loses to that so without any further ado let's go ahead and jump on into the deck profile so starting off with your tempai package i'm gonna just be showing this all at once because it's actually pretty small um that's the beauty of this deck is that you play such a small tempai package that it just doesn't matter. So we're playing three copies of the Baidora. We're also playing uh, three copies of Zongdora, three copies of the Field Spell, three copies of Sangen Kaiman, and then two copies of the Fedora. Now, we're playing uh, three copies of the Baidora because it's your Stratos. We're, of course, playing three copies of the Zongdora because it's the biggest choke point in this deck, which is funny but also very unfortunate that if you just stop the tuner from getting its effect uh if you don't have any other extenders you pretty much lose like if you just open up zongdor going second you try to attack and the opponent goes end of main valor or they activate imperm on you upon attack declaration you don't have like the field spell protecting you in the main phase or anything you're gonna lose although even with the field spell if they imperm upon attack declaration uh then yeah you're just going to lose uh, as always i apologize for the crudely uh black and white printed uh, proxies. I prefer to test my cards uh, physically instead of just online. Uh, the Fedoras are only a two of because of the fact it doesn't do anything on its own unless you open up it and Zongdora. Um, but on normal or special summon or in the damage step, you can target a level four lower fire dragon and special summon it. Um, yeah, it's it's really good. I don't think you need to play three. And then Sangin Kaiman, this is what makes the engine of um tempai so good is because of sangin kaiman you go into battle phase you activate this add zongdor special summon and now you just have full otk so i've been messing around with playing it in like other small engines i've tried dragon link but dragon link mostly revolves around darks and it just doesn't work um i've also tried in centurion because the new gargoyle 2 monster is a dark dragon so you have the dragon synergy to make um your tempai synchro monsters um, and then I also messed around with like a little Cash Tira engine where you cut back on some of the hand traps to play like Cash Tira cards. Because at the end of the day, even though I'm playing like, what, 19 hand traps in the stack plus three super poly, you, we don't have max C in the TCG. So you don't have that ability to go like max C and draw into more hand traps. Yet every build I see on YouTube is just playing a bunch of hand traps. And I wouldn't say that that's wrong, but I feel because of the fact we don't have Kaiser Coliseum and because of the fact we don't have Max C, I feel like that this deck is going to be able to cheese wins out of the gate, but then once people prepare for it, whether it's Summon Limit, D-Barrier, what have you, the deck is going to have a much harder time. I know that there's ways to play around D-Barrier, like you can play the Promethean Princess, World Sea Dragons, Atlantis Engine, or you can play Super Poly Targets, but you still need to have something for going first regardless, even if it's the Ultimaya to Zulkin line, which we'll talk about as well. But that's where I feel like maybe this should be played in like a sub-engine, sub even if it's like post-Infinite Forbidden, when we get the Millennium cards, where you at least have some sort of going first package to like end on an Apollosa or something. Because I feel like ending on Heavenly Spheres plus like three or four hand traps, depending on how you open, isn't necessarily going to be enough. However, just off of Heavenly Spheres, it can lead into some interesting plays, and we'll talk about that. But 
that's it for literally just our engine. Everything else that you see in this stack is just non-engine. So we're playing three copies of Shifter because we can. Um, we have one game solely off of Shifter. Like, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't the Tempai cards. It was Shifter. Uh, three Ash because it's Ash. Uh, three Valor. And then I'm messing around with one Nib, one Moonlit Chill, one Ghost Bell, and one Ghost Ogre. These are basically the flex spots of the deck. You could cut these four for like three um, Fenrir and like a Rise Heart so that you can make like a rank 7 Exceed line. Um, I've seen people messing around with Mass Dragon because you just go Normal Summon Mass Dragon, Battle Face, swing into something, and then bring out Zongdora. And I believe that's in damage step, so they can't really do anything to it. Or you can, like, get out by Dora and then get your search. Um, so these are, like, essentially your flex spots to do with what you want. We just obviously don't know what the meta is going to be like because we're still waiting on a ban list that we're probably not going to get to the end of April, unfortunately. And we don't even have Legacy of Destruction yet in our hands at the time of me making this profile. So do with these four slots what you will. Um, like I said, cash cards is not necessarily a bad idea. Um, and then I love the Vice Steel cards in this deck. We're playing one Baldric, one Druid Swarm, and one Magna Mutt. So, obviously, since this is the Tempai Dragons are Dragons, you can banish a Light or Dark, summon out Magna Mutt, and then use the effect to get, like, Zongdora to your hand or Baidora at the end phase and just have full combo. These also combo well because they're level 6 Dragons, so you can make either the Transcend Super Dragon or you can make Trident, or you can make Baron. You have options available to you. Um, for the spells, we're playing uh, three Super Poly. This is, I feel better than Hand Traps overall. Um, and it also allows you to play through D Barrier. Um, if the opponent builds a board that you just don't like, that maybe you just didn't open up any Hand Traps, but you drew for turning to, like, say, a Super Poly, you just Super Poly clean it all up, and you just win the ball game, and it gives you extra damage on board. Because keep in mind, with the Tenpai Dragons, you're not locked into anything until you use Bident Dragon's effect to special summon a Fire Dragon from Grave. Then you're locked in only summoning Fire Dragons. But besides all that, you can do all of your shenanigans with Synchro Summoning in the battle phase, and you're not locked into anything. So it, it's really good. I feel like Super Poly is absolutely incredible in this deck, and I love it more than the Link um, line with like Promethean Princess and all that because of the fact that, yes, it helps you to OTK through D-Barrier, but number one, you lose to Nib, and number two, you have to have access to all three dragons and you're not always going to have that you know if you have access to just by dora and zong dora you know by the time that you're in battle phase and attacking all that then you can't do the promethean raging um salaman great raging phoenix and zelantis otk like you just don't have enough gas you have to have access to all three dragons so i really like super poly for that because worst case you attack with two dragons then you could super poly both of them together to like make guru or mud dragon whichever one it is um so yeah uh terraforming because it's good um, three prosperity. If this goes to one, you can play where there's a will, there's a way out with like set rotation. It's not terrible. Um, and then for the last bit of hand traps, we're playing three imperms. Um, so that that's why I'm saying that like we don't have max C. So I wonder if it's even right to play all these hand traps. At the same time, when you open four hand traps plus a Zongdora, you have like just the biggest shit eating grin because the opponent just cannot play the game. Uh, for the extra deck. Uh, we're playing two copies of Bite It, Dragion. Uh, this card's disgusting. It's a level 7 tuner um, that you can just resurrect a, a Fire Dragon from Grave and then Synchro. Uh, one of the things I like to do is that if I have access to Sangin Manor, then I'll go into like Bite It, Dragion, Bite Dragion, Revive uh, one of the level 3s, Synchro into Transcend Super Dragon, and then it it's unaffected by activated effects because you're still in main phase 1 from the Sangin Manor. And then once you go to battle phase, the opponent can't activate any cards or effects in the battle phase. So you can freely activate like Sangin Kaiman, go for Zongdora, and just have full-on OTK. And the opponent can't play the game because of Super Dragon. It's really, really disgusting. Uh, speaking of Super Dragon, uh, this this card's absolutely insane. It doesn't come up a lot, but it, the fact that it just shuts off all the opponent's effects in the battle phase is so damn good. Like, if this thing's going to be a quarter century... I'm getting it as a quarter century. Uh, our ultimate rare, but it's unlim, not first ed. Uh, Trident Dragon. I had to get it as an ulti. If you all know about my TCG player rant, then you know how much I was ranting about the fact I had to wait like five days for this thing finally got shipped. Um, a quarter century, not a starlight, but still sexy regardless. Quarter century Black Rose. So this thing's a fire dragon. You have Sangin Manor up, like I talked about in uh, the in-depth video. Uh, you make Black Rose with Sangin Manor up. You can play it in defense if they've got like an M-Pen up. Use its effect, nuke the board. The opponent has to have like Imperm plus Cosmic uh, to Cosmic the Sangin Manor and then negate your Black Rose. Other than that, you're getting a guaranteed nuke. And then if you're sitting on Sangin Kaiman in your hand, 
You can just go battle phase on a clear board, activate the Kaiman, summon Zongdor, you have OTK. Or just go Fedora into Zongdor and you still accomplish the same thing. Uh, Black Rose is absolutely disgusting in this deck. Uh, Moonlight Dragon for those situations where you're dealing with a monster that you can't out by like attacking into it or popping it with a uh, Transcend. Uh, one Baron because it's Baron. Uh, one Rut Row Raggy, Ruddy Rose Dragon. Uh, this card doesn't come up a lot, but as a level 10 option, it's really good. It's 3200 attack. Uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, 3,200 attack, and then it banishes all cards in both players' graveyards, so that's, like, really good against stuff like uh, Shizu tier. You just banish everything out of their grave, you swing for 32, and then even, like, if they're not dead, they're probably low on life, and then they have no graveyard. Like, it's it's actually kind of insane. Uh, one Black Winged Assault. This card's actually kind of good. It doesn't come up a lot, but it's really good. 3,200 attack. Um, every time that the opponent activates a monster effect, they take 700 damage, and this thing gains a Black Feather counter at resolution. Once it has four or more, you tribute it pop all cards on the field uh this this thing has really interesting application especially with the uh, tazulkin line which we'll talk about in a moment and then for the super poly targets playing one Garua, one Ma one mud dragon one predator plant dragon scapelia one starving venom one earth gold and this thing needs a reprint this thing was like three or four dollars when i bought it and then one heavenly spheres um you have so many flexibility spots in the extra deck so you just play all the super poly targets um to go over the tazulkin line real quick um you have to have access to at least two dragons i don't remember the combo off the top of my head i'll be honest just because i haven't done the combo in so long but like let's say you open up zongdora and Baidora. uh you end up making your end board you can do like synchro lines in the main phase your end board ends up becoming a tzulkan in defense you set a card um in your back row that triggers the tzulkan you go for black winged assault dragon right so that keeps you insulated from uh, the Tzulkin taking uh, being attacked. Uh, but you end on the Tzulkin, you have Black Winged Assault Dragon, and then ideally you also have the Heavenly Spheres. And what makes this insane is that you contribute the Heavenly Spheres, you activate the effect uh, on a new chain, since even if it gets negated, you can still use the Engrave effect to summon. You summon out um, Baidora. Baidora's effect will activate. It adds or sets a Sangin's Bottom Trap. So you use its effect... Um, to set, say, uh, Sangin Kaiman, if I can grab it, to set the Sangin Kaiman uh, in the back row, that then triggers Ultimaya to Zulkin during the opponent's turn, and then you can drop out a Crystal Wing. Meanwhile, they're still staring down this, and they're taking damage every time they activate a monster effect, and once this has four more counters, you distribute it to blow away the board. Um, alternatively, you can also do Heavenly Spheres to go for, say, like Fedora to resurrect Baidora and set Sangin Kaim in that way to still get to Crystal Wing, or just resurrect, say, like uh, Zongdora off the Fedora. And then that way the Fedora prevents your Fire Dragons from being destroyed by battle. And then if they attack, then Zongdora's effect activates and damage step to summon out uh, Baidora anyway, and then still set a card. Um, so I'm looking into that as like a going first option. Uh, I just I just don't know because it loses to Nib, but I'm starting to think like this deck's just going to lose to Nib if it loses to Nib anyway. Hopefully the opponent sided out Nib because we're not in game one when that combo comes up. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Guys, let me know what you think about this deck profile down in the comments below. Um, I feel that this is like the best possible build for Tenpai Dragon. I've been messing around with this deck like crazy. I really dedicate a lot of time to making this. Um... Like I said, go watch the in-depth video if you want to learn more. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time in this deck profile. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm thinking. Feel free to try it out. Let me know how we can make it better. Maybe cut some of the hand traps for like a Kashtira line or something. Um, and we can, we can figure it out. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.